We don't always know if we're making the best decisions, but we can always make the best of our decisions. Like show up, mm -hmm. show up at your best. And then a year later or six months later, reevaluate. Yeah, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't be doing that. But it's like my mindset is always just be all in on what you're doing. Be all in on where you're at. Be all in on the journey because that's how you're actually going to be able to make the most of it and look back and have some crazy stories and memories to, to go with it. We are Gold Ivy. Our mission is to empower you to own and unleash your truth. Stories of resiliency are gold and ivy grows in hard places. Those hard places are what creates space for light to shine through. You decide what works for your daily life and how to transform our lessons into your gold. This is Ivy Unleashed, a Gold Ivy production. Welcome back to the Ivy Unleashed podcast today. Ooh, the energy in this house is unmatched. We've got Timmy the Dreamer in Ooh. house. Timmy, welcome to Ivy Unleashed. Stoked to be here. Yes, we're so excited to chat with Timmy. Timmy's the type of energy, the type of person that we have been wanting to attract, especially in here. It's always great when someone's mm -hmm. in here. And Timmy is from Minnesota. Yep. Timmy has a huge mission. Timmy is full of ideas and dreams and wants to share it with the world, has experience. We could go into a million stories. And so I think it's going to be hard to pack it all in today, but we want people to know you and know what your mission is. So let's just start with what you're doing right now, what you're trying to do here and in the U.S. All right. Right now, I'm on this mission to be the first person ever, which I actually just found out recently. So now I can say that, which is fun. <laughs> Uh, to give 50 speeches in all 50 states at schools across America. And my speech is called Dreamology 101. So it was all created from this idea that when I was in school, I felt like I did everything right. Like I was actually kind of the nerd. I, I loved school. I showed up. I worked hard. And yet when I got to the end of my schooling experience after I finished college, it was the worst time of my life. I was confused and lonely and anxious. And I was like, I don't want to do any of these things that people are telling me to do with my life. So what's next? You know, what's next? I don't really know what that looks like. And I decided to create, at first it was just me, but my own field of study. I was like, well, what if I treat this part of my life just like school, but instead of studying what everybody else wants me to study, I'll study how do I build my dream life. And so I created this concept called dreamology I now have a Word document in my computer, actually. It's 300 pages. I've literally documented everything that has happened since 2019. And that whole journey, this last five years, going all across the country, doing all the things I've done, changing all the lives, then I was like, okay, I think it's time for me to do something with this. And so created Dreamology as a speech, as a workshop, going to schools, and along with that, as you guys know, created Dreamer State University, which long term, the vision is to be the school of the future, helping kids chase their dreams, change others' lives, find mental health and happiness with both digital and digital courses, coaching community, but also in-person events, retreats, and all the different stuff. Someday, hopefully, a big campus, our own Dreamer State campus. Um, but it's been a crazy journey. And so, yeah, right now, I mean, the mission, obviously, the school year is about to start. By the time this drops, the school year might have already started, uh, but it's attack the Midwest, move out west where I have a lot of connections because, as you know, I've been living in Los Angeles as well, and then work my way south, go up east, and along the way, go to schools, change lives, do philanthropy, throw events, and just literally create this whole movement of like, hey, this is the future of education and inspiring kids to tap into their dreams and the life they really want to live. Because at the end of the day, I always say there's two paths we can take. It's not thousands or millions. It's not, oh, you can be a podcaster or a drop shifter or crypto or influencer or, or this or that. It's, no, there's two paths. Like one is the path that you see everybody else taking, that your friends are taking, your parents want you to take, society wants you to take. The other one is the one for you. Mm -hmm. There's one path designed for you, your gifts, your skills, your passions, your purpose, your job is to follow that path and trust it and have faith that it's going to take you where you got to go. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. And what I'm thinking right now is that path is lonely, right? The one that isn't normal to society. So the fact that you're talking about this, we're talking about this today, we are making it the norm. Like that mm -hmm. is the goal that what actually makes you happy and find that and dedicate your life to yeah. that. And that's exactly what you're preaching. 
hundred percent. It's amazing. hundred percent. The loneliness is a huge part. And that again was the hardest part for me because growing up, we talked about, I played basketball. I always had a ton of friends through basketball in college. It was fraternities. And so I had all these different typical male friendships through like sports and drinking beer. But then all of a sudden it was like, Oh, I want to go start a business. I want to travel the world. I'm interested in personal development. I'm interested in philanthropy. Oh, okay, all of a sudden I'm alone. All my friends just moved to Chicago and New York and big cities and are taking big jobs. And all of a sudden I don't have a crew to do this with. And that's a period that I think almost everybody has to go through when you're trying to, I don't want to say reinvent yourself, but discover who you really are. And it's like when you go on that journey, that can be lonely, but I also learned a lot of lessons of, for me, my life changed when I found a group of guys to be able to talk about my dreams with. We actually call ourselves the daydreamers. Mm-hmm. And every Monday night, this cafe, uh, French Meadow in Uptown. See you there. We would, <laughs> Not a dude, but I'm coming. <laughs> we would go there every Monday night for about a year straight. This was like 2018, 2019. And that was when my passion for community mm-hmm. building and dreams started because I realized whoa, like Mm -hmm. I always love community and shared experiences, but when you're having this communal experience around dreams, Mm -hmm. like magic happens and people can feel it. Like the workers are like, what are you guys doing? Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking about our dreams. They're like, can we join? You know, it was literally (laughs) like this thing. And then the more dreams, like the more you share your dreams, the more people you start to meet. And literally now, five, six later, five, six years later, I've met thousands of people that are cut from the same cloth as me. And it's funny because I was talking to my friend literally yesterday. I was like, dude, it's crazy because when this journey started, I had zero. I had zero friends who had the same energy and, and passions that I have. And now I have thousands. But that was because I was willing to step into that lonely yeah. phase to say, okay, I'm going to start sharing myself with the world. I'm going to start showing up in spaces that align with that person. And again, a part of this is always just trust and faith that, those people then are going to come into your life if you're also out there doing the work. So. And yeah, and sometimes it takes you shedding the people that don't believe in you or think you're crazy mm-hmm. or sh- dim your light because they ha- don't feel that same permission to step into their own creativity, their own big dreams. And it's just the way that a lot of people were raised. And I think about my own experience, like I was always – I always felt like I could do whatever I wanted or be whoever I wanted. My parents were like very supportive in that way, but that's not the norm in these schools. And then, you know, you go through high school and you don't know what jobs are available. You know, there's like, you could be a teacher, you could be an accountant, you can be, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I love what you're creating. So can you give us a little taste of what you want to leave these kids feeling when you walk Mm -hmm. into a school, you're on that stage, you've got their attention. How do you want them to feel when they leave that room? Uh, I had a huge convo with someone the other day about this feeling because uh, we talked about the difference between leaving someone inspired versus leaving, leaving them empowered. Mm-hmm. And like this inspiration, I feel like is, is kind of the first step. It's you, like, oh, I feel so inspired. I feel like, wow. But then it's like, okay, what do I actually do, right? Mm-hmm. So I think the goal is to get to level two there. It's to say, okay, I feel fired up and I actually have – action steps that I can go take. And so for me with that, like my whole thing is like treat this dream chasing journey again, like a school and like a subject in school, right? If you're going to go to your first day of calculus class, let's say you have no idea what's going on, but you don't expect yourself to know what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. You show up, you go to class, you study, you take the practice test, And you might not get an A in calculus, but when you show up to test day, you're going to know more than when you start. And that's just a three-month period. I think the problem is, is we expect ourselves to be straight-A students at our dreams before we even start. And we all know, like, this journey takes five, ten years. Anybody that you follow that has done anything Mm -hmm. impressive, it's a ten-plus-year journey. And so I really tell kids, I inspire them to say, I hope you don't have it figured out. Because what I'm really saying is I hope that in your mind you don't think you need to have it figured mm-hmm. out. Even Jesse, who we look up to, Jesse Etzer, always says, like, your 20s is for discovering what you're good at, your 30s is for getting good at it, and your 40s is for making money off of it. <laughs> and it's like that's such a good mm-hmm. philosophy because what if we removed that pressure of I need to have the answer, that anxiety of not knowing, I feel like whether it's work or a relationship or 
anything in your life, you just want to latch on to something to just feel secure about mm-hmm. it. But then you realize, well, this thing might not actually be what's for me versus if you say the unknowing is actually a great place to be. I'm going to show up, try, learn, be all in, grow, meet people. And through that journey, I'm going to end up where I want to be. So for me, it's like what I do at the end of my speech is I talk about my whole journey and how I committed to this contract with my dreams and I built these dream mates, I call them. I go on this adventure and at the end, I have students close their eyes and I have them, I basically say like those two paths of life. Imagine the first one doesn't exist and fill up your brain with all the things that you could possibly want to do with your life, all the people you'd want to see, all the places you'd want to go, the kind of person you'd want to be. And then I have them go to that world. I kind of lead them through this dream manifestation. Then I have them write them down, share them with others. And then I have some students come up on stage and share their dreams. And then everybody's supporting and cheering and clapping. And at the end, it's okay. What is one action step you can take leaving today? And who's one person you can go share these dreams with? And then it's like, okay, now every week when you finish that one task, go to the next task. Mm -hmm. And if you get in the habit of just doing that, then you're, you're started. Then you're mm-hmm. off to the races. So it's like, get them to think about their dreams. Get them to write them down, whether they're specific or not. Like for me at the beginning, like when I was struggling with the anxiety and I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life, it was, I want to find a purposeful career. I want to be happy and I want good relationships. That's not specific, but everybody tells you, you need to be so specific. It's like, how are you supposed to be specific if you don't know, <laughs> right? Like it doesn't yeah. make any sense. It's like, You have to start broad, and it's this game of getting more narrow over time as you explore. But that narrow might be here. It might be to the left. It might be to the right. But it's okay to start broad. Mm -hmm. And I think then you're working your way to figuring out, well, what does make me happy? And what does give me purpose? Mm -hmm. Because those are questions you can actively work on versus like, I don't know what I want to do. Oh, my gosh, I feel anxious. Ah, eh, eh." And then you just do nothing. Right. right? It's asking yourself this open-ended question so that you can tap into what is actually right for me. Because, you you know, you compare it to calculus, and I'm just thinking, that's got got curriculum. You know exactly what to follow. (laughs) Right. So when you took this as, okay, I'm going through school, I'm learning, how did you know what to follow? Because it wasn't mapped out. Dre, tell the people as fast as you can why Move With Gold Ivy is the last mind-body fitness program they'll ever have to buy and how women are finally getting the transformation they're looking for. I love a challenge. Let's go. Two big things. One, Move provides a fun atmosphere to work out in that actually gets you excited to show up and follow through with your goals. Not only is there an element of fun, but we've carefully curated a program that makes it as easy as possible for women to take care of themselves. And two, a MOVE membership addresses every aspect of your health, mind and body. Our MOVE members are getting the physical transformation they've been hoping for and feeling like they've finally found the group that motivates them on a daily basis. What did I miss? As a MOVE member, you receive a weekly workout plan, weekly live or Zoom workouts, an on-demand workout library, transformational quarterly reset challenges, monthly coaching calls, monthly masterminds with health experts, and a private group of motivated members for support and accountability. It's ready for you when you're ready to boost your metabolism, confidence, and feel your absolute best. Join MOVE or learn more by clicking the link in the show notes clicking the link in our bio on Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok, or by messaging us on any social channel at Gold Ivy Health Co. It's your time. Move for your health, move for your confidence, move for your mental clarity, move with Gold Ivy. Today's episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Every episode of Ivy Unleashed is dedicated to empowering you to take ownership of your health. And what it really comes down to is prioritizing your mental health. We've both seen the beauty and growth that therapy can bring and are thrilled to partner with BetterHelp to allow you the opportunity to feel heard and seen by a professional. The National Alliance on Mental Health reports that 155 million people live in a designated mental health professional shortage area, and BetterHelp is working to close that gap. I've personally used BetterHelp and loved it because it was all online, making it super convenient. The biggest piece for me was how affordable it is. I was able to choose the therapist that met my needs. I came in with wanting to work on childhood trauma and anxiety, and it was unbelievable to see how many options I had with all the different backgrounds of therapists. With BetterHelp, you have access to a network of over 30,000 licensed and experienced therapists. 
Therapy is all about deepening your self-awareness. And sometimes we can't see our own patterns and behaviors until we talk them out and get an unbiased perspective. It's really nice to have someone who doesn't know you and has the professional background to help you thrive in your daily life. It has made the world of a difference with every relationship in my life, including the one with myself. To get started, all you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire about your needs and preferences and choose your therapist out of the options they give you. You can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via text, chat, phone, or video call. Also, you can switch therapists at no additional charge until you find the right fit for you. The best investment you can make is in yourself. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash gold ivy. That's better, dot com slash gold ivy. Take the first step to inner peace and freedom today. And now back to the show. I think that's where you lead with those questions. So for example, you know, let's just take the the mental health, the anxiety and the mental health. And I'm like, okay, well, let me see what I can find. And I found this class, uh, Yale University was offering this digital class for free because it was during COVID and it was called like the science of well-being. Mm -hmm. And they were studying what are scientifically proven things that make human beings happier. If there is things that can make human that the whole the whole concept was can humans become happier mm. so i took this course and they found out there was these eight things that can make human beings happier acts of kindness gratitude mindfulness meditation exercise having a de-stress ritual um 7 to 8 hours of sleep using your strengths on a daily basis so now i'm like okay here's eight things that scientifically mm. proven make human beings happier And I keep going on that journey, right? When it comes to purpose-driven work, it's, okay, let me see if I can find an exercise online or something that can help facilitate that. Well, I found the work of the Blue Zones, and they have this concept called Ikigai, which a lot of people know about. You know, a combination of what you love, what you're good at, what the world needs, and what you can make money off of. And I say, okay, I usually kind of put the make money off to the side to start because I feel you can make money off of pretty much anything in today's world, but it's like, what do I enjoy? Well, I always enjoyed leadership, and I love community building, and I love communication and speaking. Okay, what if I get into events? What if I get into podcasting? What if I try to start storytelling? Okay, now we start making videos. Now we're doing podcasting. Now we're trying to host things. Oh my gosh, here's this guy, Charlie. And then it, so it's kind of like, I mean, it's messy, right? (laughs) But it's like taking one step again of like, okay, here's this question. At the end of the day, we can go on chat GBT and be like, yo, how do I find purpose? And it will <laughs> probably give you 30 good options for like things to try. Yeah. But you have to be willing to try. And that's where like allowing yourself to not be the A plus student to start allowing yourself to say, I don't know. And I'm OK with that. I'm OK with putting myself out there because I know that the only way I'm going to be able to know is if I jump into the deep end and then fail and try and fail and try and fail and try until I. So I figure it out. What I love is that you're showing people the path. Like you're showing up endless days in a row. You're looking to book these schools and you're showing like, I'm trying to be patient right now. Like this is hard. Like I haven't, right. I, I believe and I have faith and I have trust this is going to happen. Yeah. yeah. And you're putting yourself out there. And I think also normalizing mm. the vulnerability of that. For normalizing sure. like it. It's not an easy thing to have your dream job. You do have to work. You do have to show up. You do have to fail. You do have to. And with Brooke and I, we don't like to pretend like we know things we don't. We're like, (laughs) we don't know what we're doing. We were trained in business, but we know we want to share our lessons with the world. We know we want to have experts where people share their stories and come in and inspire people. And so we're just doing it imperfectly and showing up. And I think... You're normalizing that process too by showing people your process of landing. Like you're not just waiting to have this reel of 50 states. (laughs) You're showing people like, hey, this is who I am. This is what I'm trying to do. And I'm starting from scratch right now. Can you help me? For sure. (laughs) And I I, I love you mentioned that because I think this can probably relate to an older audience of, you know, you build something that is good, right? Like when I was working with Charlie, we had... A following of 9 million people. We were collaborating with celebrities like Oprah and Steve Harvey and Jake Paul and all these people. We were touring the country. We were working with the biggest brands in the world. I was living in a mansion in Bel Air with, with Charlie and our team. And it's like, 
for a lot of people then, right, that equivalent might be, well, I already have a good paying job and I already have these things. And you have to then jump off this pedestal of something you've created or something you've built and jump back into the unknown. And I didn't realize, like my amount of empathy has grown so much for people because that is a hard thing to do. Because you're like, well, I'm supposed to have it figured out. You know, I'm Timmy. I'm the COO of the foundation. And I'm Charlie Rocket's manager. And I, and now I'm the kid who's trying to figure out how to book speeches. Mm-hmm. You know? And to, to still find that confidence. Like, that's been a huge journey this year of, like, I always say, remember who you are. Like, remember mm-hmm. that you can do this. Because when you're trying something new again and you don't know how to do it, all of a sudden your mind starts to play tricks on you of like, are you a failure? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, but you used, you did this thing. And I think about, I mean, former athletes, former celebrities, former musicians, how that crash must be so devastating. Mm-hmm. We give so much slack to like, oh, well, you should be fine. You were in the NBA or you did this, like you're good. And now they're like 45. It's like that was their identity. the mental anguish they probably went through. And that mm-hmm. goes for anybody. I'm going to leave this corporate job, but I have three kids and I can't even imagine what that would feel like. You know what I mean? It's like, I can't even imagine what that would feel. So it's like, we all, at some point, again, it's just that choice we have to make. There's probably no right or wrong, but you have to decide for you, what is that right choice? And for me, it was like, I'm going to jump off this ship because I know this is what I'm supposed to do. And I'm going to share the journey. And like you said, I mean, it's been a journey. And it's funny because, again, most people think this is supposed to happen immediately. Where I know, you know, my mentor, Brandon Collinsworth, he's always like, I gave a speech at Ohio State University last year. And it was like my first one at a school. And he's like, great, you're at hour 10 of 10,000. <laughs> Keep going, you know. And uh, I love that. You know, I didn't have that mindset for the last 27 years of my life. But now I have some mentors who are really like, dude, like this is not about this year. This is about 10 years from now. Mm -hmm. Like, how are you showing up to ensure that every day you take steps to where when you are in your mid 30s, you are exactly where yeah. you want to be don't cheat the process he always says you can't skip from white belt to black belt you 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 could try but you're gonna get your ass kicked right mm-hmm. you can't you can't do it and um you know I think for me it's like even though I have this big public goal right now I think I'm able to remain calm because I know it isn't about how fast I do this mm-hmm. it's about how I do it do yeah. it the right way show up every day chop wood carry water Show up every day, chat with carry water, learn, grow, mm-hmm. go to the gym, take care of myself, and then let it evolve the way it's supposed to. Well, that really speaks to the trusting. Right? Yeah. You have this knowing, okay, I know this is what I'm supposed to be doing. There's patience, yeah. there's <laughs> trust. And we always say it's like 90% mindset. Oh my God. Yeah. This game. So how in this process are you keeping your nervous system calm, your mindset right? <laughs> and I'm thinking certain things do help. Like we yeah. we heard a Navy SEAL, um, not speech, but quote, quote that it slow is smooth and smooth is fast. <laughs> and so that's constantly what I'm telling myself. Yeah. So I would love just inside look yeah. at your mindset and practices you do. 100%. I mean, this has been a really interesting year for me. Like I'll be honest and vulnerable. Like when I left working with Charlie – it it was a it was an emotional there was a whole emotional suitcase I didn't want to open. <laughs> I'll just put it that way. Like the journey was I always say it's so yin and yang. People don't understand success. People assume that when you get these things that your life's just perfect. I said, no, no, your problems quadruple. And like the more light you experience, the more dark that mm-hmm. will be there. And I think that's Los Angeles in a lot of ways. <laughs> And so, you know, just from people I met, you know, I'd meet these celebrities that are, you know, one of the biggest musicians on earth. I'm like, I have never met a man who looks more depressed. Billionaire mm. who tells me a story of how he almost killed himself once. You know, these things, but then you experience it for yourself. Oh my gosh, I got 12 employees and they're all in their young 20s and they have their own issues and they're coming to me for it. And then one of our business partner passes away and then the first person leaves the team and then this happens. And then we're helping a young girl with cancer and she passes away and the dad's crying in your arms and you're, it's like, you don't, I didn't have the skills to, to be able to do all that. So then when it all ended with Charlie and me and him split up, it was all there. And so I was trying to start this next chapter of my life 
and I was excited about it, but I felt so heavy and I felt so anxious and I felt so beaten down. And so the, a big part of this year has truthfully been giving space for that first. Mm-hmm. Like I tell people, the most important goal in my life right now is not the 50 speeches in 50 states. It's my personal and spiritual growth. And I have allowed myself to feel, and I think that's a big part of it. I mean, I this year cut out alcohol and coffee and weed. I, I now drink coffee one day a week again. It's my treat. <laughs> uh, but I cut it out for 200 days, and now it's like, okay, wow. use it one day a week strategically, but don't make it the thing that you use to wake up yeah. and hide yourself from the fact that you feel you know anxious or tired or these different things. So I cut out all my vices, and it's not because it was like, honestly, I want to be healthier. It's because I knew that I was using all of them to avoid how do I really feel. Mm-hmm. So this year, it has just been honestly a journey of let me actually tap in with that. And the first couple months were brutal. (laughs) I mean, because I'm like, I feel sad all the time. I was like, what is going on? But then, and the party was like, is this worth it? Like, would it be easier to just smoke a little weed at night? Would it be, you know, California, it's it's legal. Everybody's doing it, right? right? Why am I putting myself through this? Would this be easier to just have the cup of coffee every day? But then eventually you're like, like right now, I have like I'm like oh my god, I feel so much mental clarity, mm. and that was on the other side of from January to now, seven months of these vices are gone. So I just at my brother's wedding, I had one glass of wine. It was on a vineyard. I had to do it, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like you know. So there's no n- dependency. So now 100%. to answer your question, now it's you know one of my other mentors like says like your daily sadhana, your daily practice. You have mm-hmm. to have a, a time every day where you create space for yourself. So for me right now, you know that's in the morning, and usually right now it's doing my exercise, doing my workouts. I try to mix yoga and sauna and ice baths and gym and all these different things. I uh, have my meditation routine. So for me, my meditation routine is I do breath work. I then go into a meditation and then I lead into a gratitude prayer. And I think I've learned a lot about prayer this year where I feel a lot of people think prayer has to be like a religious thing. Mm-hmm. But for me, I'm like, no, pray. anybody can pray, and it's the most powerful thing ever. And I just do gratitude. Th- thank you for this. Thank you for this. Thank you for this. Thank you for this. And then recently, at the end of that, what I do is I just close my eyes, and I just visualize my whole day. Here's how it's going to happen. I'm going to get up. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to go to the podcast. I'm going to go home. I'm going to send my messages. I'm going to respond to these messages. I'm going to make these two pieces of content. I'm going to work on my digital community later. I got this evening walk I'm doing, and it's like I just see it in my head and then wake up and go. So right now, every day, that practice can change a little bit depending on what I need that day. But that's the thing. I'm learning more about instead of just like, what do I need today? You know what? I could actually use a walk this morning and a meditation. You know what? I want to go to the gym, and I want to get a good workout in. I'm learning to flow with my body and my mind and my soul better than in the past when it was literally just like, we're just going to run through walls Mm -hmm. nonstop. Mm -hmm. And that has been a huge part of my year. And I will continue to be because when I was working with Charlie, we were all burnt out. We were all exhausted. We were all not taking care of ourselves. And so I, I know what that feels like now. And I also know that if the business disappeared tomorrow, I'm left with myself. Yeah. So if I'm in shambles, then like, it's what exactly are, what I was just what thinking. What are we doing like, here, right? What are we doing? You are your own reality. You are the way you perceive the world. You are your experiences. You are your interactions. And so if you're not caring for yourself, it's literally nothing. You know, I think about that as a parent. It is my job to take care of myself. So I, I'm going to cry, but like, if I am not caring for myself, like I am teaching them how to care for themselves and show up and I'm like mm-hmm. dictating their reality of the vibe of their home, you know? Mm. And so it's just so crucial. And we have so many parents that listen too. And I love what you said, like whether it's as a parent in your professional life, like if, if you don't care for yourself, yeah, these things can go away. Nothing's permanent. So if you don't have these practices, 
you know, you have nothing or you have, you're in shambles. And there's so many questions I want to ask you, but I want to circle back to your work with Charlie because just yeah. to kind of elaborate, if people don't know who he is and the yeah. work that you did, yeah. how did you get involved with him? And can you talk about yeah. what you experienced working with him? Yeah. So Charlie is, he was a former music mogul. He was in the music industry, managed artists like 2 Chains, Travis Porter, worked with Soldier Boys. It was like Atlanta hip hop scene. Uh, for those who might not know those names, but pretty big names, right? Mm -hmm. Grammy-winning artists and all this different stuff. And he had gotten a brain tumor, and so he stepped away from the music industry and had this whole journey of, you know, rebuilding himself, rediscovering himself, tapping back to his own dreams, and experiencing a lot of amazing things through that and decided to start this movement called the Dream Machine. So he had this huge RV. It was painted. It was, again, called the Dream Machine, and he was going across the country, and he was literally doing philanthropic work and helping make people's dreams come true. So I call it like Make-A-Wish on Wheels. Mm -hmm. It's kind of what he was doing. And, again, this is the time where I'm in my house, and I'm it's COVID lockdown, and I'm like, okay, I want to build this community for dreamers, and I have this dreamology concept. And, and literally, it was on linked in of all things I saw one of his videos and I'm thinking to myself wait a second this guy's making dreams come true and traveling and starting this business and I'm like these are all the things that I said I wanted to do and so my brother and I we saw that he was going to be in Milwaukee which is six hours from here and we drove there and we were like we got to show up with some ideas because our whole thing was you know, we can't just show up and be like, oh my God, we love you. You're so cool, right? It's I like, work with you. <laughs> and I, I learned so much about navigating how do we get these things that we want because you don't want like to fan boy or girl mm -hmm. over people. You want to show you care about what they care about. And for me, it was, you know, it was, you're cool with Charlie, but I love what you're doing. And so we showed up with this list of ideas and all these things and we were volunteering at his event and we were just helping. And then after the event, he just, he FaceTimed me and he was like, so who are you guys? You know, you guys were here this whole day doing all this stuff. And I told him, Hey, here's our story. And also we're here for 48 hours and we have this list of ideas. What do you want to do? And he pointed out this video concept we had because we wanted to make a video about what he was doing at the time. He didn't really have that. And so my brother and I literally stayed up all night. We didn't sleep. We're driving around Milwaukee, a city we don't know, trying to figure out where to film, what to do. The next morning we meet him at a coffee shop and we say, Hey, Charlie, here we go. We're ready to film. And he's just like, what? You know, <laughs> when did you do this? We're, well, we didn't sleep. Like, we're, we're ready to go. Let's do it. We got 48 hours. So we filmed a bit, but then we actually went back to Minnesota, went back the next weekend, filmed in Milwaukee, then drove to Chicago with him, filmed in Chicago. He gets on a flight to go on a one-week vacation, and he calls me on the third day of that vacation and says, hey, I'm getting back to Chicago in five days. If you and your brother want to come on the rest of this tour with me, I want you guys to come. Oh my gosh. And he was, he basically said, I only have budget to pay for one of you. And we said, don't worry about it. We'll both, we're both coming. So basically we show up and literally, I mean, I thought it was going to be a couple month tour. It turned into to three years and that's where oh, then wow. we, I mean, went all around the country that first tour um, about two months after I started, we got a half a million dollar brand deal with Hasbro, the toy company. So the holidays, we went all over the country. We converted stores in malls into toy stores and had kids pay with their Christmas gifts with Monopoly money. We were saving people from eviction. We were collaborating with Miami Heat down in Miami. And then eventually, because when we started, the social media piece was, he had 100,000 followers, which is a lot. But then four or five months in, the social media piece started to just take off. And then when we got to LA, we had a couple big stories where, all of a sudden, we were doing things on a whole bigger level. It wasn't just like buying a car for someone. It was, hey, what's your dream? Mm -hmm. Oh, I want to start a clothing company. I'm a young kid who has cerebral palsy. I can't walk, but I want an inspirational clothing company. Okay, let's partner with a clothing manufacturer. Let's launch them a website. Sell your clothing to our audience. $250,000 of sales. Kevin Hart's wearing a piece of the clothing. Mike Tyson's wearing a piece of the clothing. Akon's wearing a piece of the clothing. His life's changed. He's walking. He Almost. He's so close. But like his physical health is getting mm -hmm. better. Mental. So then it became those things on repeat. And then we started to get millions of views. It grew to 9 million followers. Celebrities were getting involved. Other brands were getting involved. We did a second tour across the country. And that was just like, 
insane. We called it the million dollar road trip. So it was like, we're going to give away a million dollars across the country. We ended up giving away $3 million on that road trip. Uh, with finishing in Kentucky, like tornadoes ended up hitting and wiping out a whole town. So we decided to detour and finish the tour in Kentucky over the New Year's, over Christmas. We were literally in a motel in Kentucky on Christmas Eve with our team, having dinner with this amazing woman who ran the motel who made a turkey dinner for us. Oh my gosh. Um, and that's what it was, our little squad, and we were going all over, and um, it truly was really, really, really amazing. And Charlie is still doing the work. He's still out there doing his thing. Um, and as I mentioned, last April, you know, we had a really big chat about the direction and where we wanted to go with it and how we wanted the organization to kind of operate, and we just didn't see eye to eye. And so I decided to leave, but he's still doing his thing, still crushing it. And, uh, you know, I'm now on to the next adventure. Ready for an unpopular opinion? I think if you're capable of running a mile, you can run a marathon. If you've ever dreamed of crossing a finish line in the fall, feeling that crisp air and hearing the cheers of a crowd, the feeling of accomplishment washing over you as you receive your medal, knowing you pushed your limits and achieved something incredible, Fall is prime race season, and that feeling of pure pride is closer than you think. As you probably know by now, I am on a mission to run a marathon in all 50 states. So far, I've run 26.2 miles in 25 states. But the finish line isn't just about the race. It's about proving to yourself you can do anything you set your mind to. Maybe a 5K, 10K, half, or marathon feels like an overwhelming mountain to conquer. That's where I come in. My personalized training plans meet you exactly where you are. We'll chat for 15 minutes about your goals, your chosen fall race, and schedule your three coaching calls. Then you'll get a plan built for your schedule, endurance, and even your favorite ways to cross train. Training and coaching with me is more than just a plan. It's about accountability, safety, and inspiration. I'll be your guide, helping you connect your mind and body for a race experience you'll never forget. You won't just have a plan. You'll have the confidence and stamina to crush your goals. Plus, you can message me anytime between calls for extra encouragement. Don't let this fall season pass you by. Sign up for my customized training plan and coaching today. Visit goldivyhealthco.com slash shop or look for the coaching link in the show notes. We also have an entire episode highlighting a previous client in our show notes too. So feel free to go back and listen to that. This is one of my biggest passions in life, running across the finish line, getting that medal, and especially helping others to do the same. Let's get you across that finish line, feeling the triumph you deserve to feel. Spaces are limited, so sign up to get your personalized training plan and coaching with me today. The things that I learned, the people that I met, the place, I mean, it, I, I was truthfully a child when I, <laughs> when I left. A sponge, and I'm sure, just it, absorbing. Yeah, it really, like, it, I mean, I learned, I, I just, I mean, he's, he's like, we were growing so fast. Timmy, hire a team, Okay. Here's an application, 500 mm. applicants. I interviewed 95% of them. I hire a team. Okay, Timmy, you're leading. All right, lead team meetings. Okay, we need content. We need to. So I went from like this unpaid intern to then basically the COO is running this whole team. And, you know, Charlie's like, hey, I got a, I got a company. Talk to him. Hey, I got a, you know, a speaking engagement, you know, negotiate. So it was like I was just tossed into the fire. And, again, it was brutal at times. <laughs> like I was like so so overwhelmed but it taught me a lot about our capacity as human beings mm -hmm. i was like at the beginning i remember like how am i supposed to focus on making content and produce at the same time it's not possible and then two years later it's like content production events fundraising brand but it taught me a lot about fighting through that again that beginning where like there's no way i could possibly do more there's no way and then it's like oh Two years later, you're doing 10 times more than what you thought. And again, that's getting through that beginning period. Uh, but it was an insane journey. And I'm, I'm like beyond. It feels, it feels fake sometimes. <laughs> I feel like it you're going like to. It didn't happen. You're yeah. going to be that grandpa that's going to have <laughs> endless stories. Like just from those three years alone. And then now I what know. you're doing too. Like you're going to be the best storytelling oh my gosh. grandpa in the rocking chair or probably not rocking chair because you take <laughs> such good care of yourself. Uh, uh, but it, none of that would have happened if you didn't have your ideas, write them down, yeah. do something bold, yeah. believe in yourself, mm -hmm. yeah. have your brother that you could do it with. I mean, yeah. there's so many pieces to that one action that yeah. changed the trajectory of your life. For sure. 
For sure. So let's back up. You've got a brother that's just as crazy as you. He's awesome. I love He's it. Awesome. What's his name? Tyler. Hi, Hi. Tyler. <laughs> um, and I want to back up to you. Is this just who you are? Like, have you always been this person that's had big dreams? Like, did your parents instill this in you? Like, what, what yeah. did this Minnesota land bring to you as a <laughs> child that created who you are now? I definitely always had this passion for life. You know, my mom tells me growing up that it was whatever I was doing it was like I was all in and I know we talked about basketball at the beginning but like truthfully my first dream was to be an NBA player (laughs) and I mean I'm not joking where it's I put my heart and soul I mean it was I was like no nobody's gonna work harder than me I'm gonna be an NBA player right (laughs) and we talked about how it doesn't didn't work out right (laughs) and that was that interesting period in my life then again where I went to college and I started just asking others what should I do, right? Well, I don't know what to do now. My dad's a business guy. I'll go be a business guy. This person says to do this, join this club. Okay, a lot of smart people study finance. I'll study finance. That was the one period of my life where I wasn't really like this. And I realized because I stopped dreaming. And if you notice in every post, I say keep dreaming. Mm -hmm. Keep dreaming. Every social media post. keep Because it's like, The dream is an evolution. Like, I didn't fail at basketball. At the time, I thought I did. But that was just part of my journey to take me to the next step. And in that period when I wasn't dreaming, that was when everything in my life was the worst. Like, I felt the loneliness. My mental health was the worst. My physical health probably wasn't even as good as it could have been. All these things. And so when then I made that decision to say, I'm going to go after my dreams, then I tapped back into that energy. And I was like, I want to be as excited about life as I was about basketball. And then I started to realize how freaking fun this stuff is to just go for it. Like to just, you, it's just like people can do it. And we see it now. And again, we talked about Jesse a few times, but like the Masogi, right? And that even in itself, for those who don't know, mm-hmm. the Masogi is this, this Japanese concept where it's like once a year, do a challenge that is so hard that your chance of failure is even 50%, but you're pushing yourself way beyond your comfort zone. So me and my friends started doing these endurance races where back in 2020, we did the David Goggins challenge where you have to run four miles every four hours for 48 hours straight. We did a marathon, then we did a 50K, then we did a 100K. And all these things were like, I can't run, I can't run 62 miles in the mountains. What? No way. But then it's like you do it and you're, you just get this feeling of, holy crap and talk about the confidence and Mm -hmm. you get to know when I'm sending five hours of cold outreach emails to schools and I'm like this sucks I close my eyes and I remember mile 45 when I'm limping across the Golden Gate Bridge and I'm like you've done way harder Mm -hmm. things than this dude so this this part of me now it's just it's alive and I'm like I don't want my life to ever not be this whether it's business or personal or when I start my own family someday it's like I want to be all in because that's how we get the most of life that's how we can maximize this thing right Mm -hmm. like we might not again might not know like I say sometimes we don't always know if we're making the best decisions but we can always make the best of our decisions Mm -hmm. like show up Mm -hmm. show up at your best and then a year later or six months later reevaluate yeah you know what maybe I shouldn't be doing that but it's like my mindset is always just be all in on what you're doing. Be all in on where you're at. Be all in on the journey because that's how you're actually going to be able to make the most of it and look back and have some crazy stories and memories to to go with it, right? Oh, so I love that. We talk about it like when we're in that space together, we call it just delusional energy. And yeah, that's actually when, sure. when we met you, we were in that space. Oh, we were sure. at the Twin Cities Expo yeah. and we were like, we don't know what's happening here, but we are going to give this 110% and our energy to these random strangers walking by. And honestly, the only booth that matched our energy was your booth. Yeah. Like, we felt so like drunk on energy <laughs> in there because we were just feeding off each other, playing music, and you guys were doing the same thing. Yes. I call so, it dream drunk. Yes. Dream drunk. I love it. And you don't I need alcohol it. to get drunk. It's the best It's the best <laughs> place to be, but it like we've. I want to circle back to the loneliness and just like yeah. how... Uh, contagious energy is Mm. and having boundaries around that because you know the majority of people don't feel this way like when you're just talking I like my energy's up I'm feeling elevated I have like tears in my eyes like let's send some cold emails (laughs) (laughs) yes and (sighs) it truly is to me the way to be and I've always been a dreamer I've always been like that and and when you get talking with people that aren't in that state 
you feel it sinking. You feel yeah. your energy getting down. And so do you have any practices around protecting your energy to keep you in Ooh. this state? <laughs> <laughs> now I do. I did not my entire life. Uh, so talk about crazy stories. In December, I spent two weeks in Peru. And it was a th- I mentioned him earlier, Brandon Collinsworth. He's my biggest mentor. Uh, he is an absolute beast, if you don't know who he is. Um, he hosts these leadership retreats in Peru, and they are intense. Like, it is two weeks of you are going to get cracked open, mm-hmm. and everything is going to come out, right? And one of the things that one of the, the coaches, there's nine, they bring nine world-class coaches. So it is like you have got a Avengers team of people <laughs> that are, yeah. you know, this one man, he looked at me and he said, he just goes, four months of no. He goes, when you leave here, everything is a no. He goes, don't give me the, but what, what about, no, 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 no. He goes, you know what I mean? Everything that is not completely aligned with your being is a no. Hmm. And for me, my entire life, I didn't know what the word boundaries was. I've given myself to everybody. And it's a part of the reason why I was exhausted working for Charlie is whether it was the team or whether it was Charlie's needs or the people that we were helping, you know, we could talk about like what my therapist has said, but you know, it's like as a kid, I was the youngest child. I had no actual physical responsibilities. So it was emotional responsibilities of being the guy that makes people happy. How that showed up as an adult is if I'm not making others happy, then I'm not doing my job. So then it leads to people pleasing. Then it leads to, I need to make sure everybody is happy. Everybody likes me. Everybody is. And then you run yourself into the ground. So at the end of last year, despite leaving Charlie, doing these kit things, going on all these races, doing these crazy retreats, by the end of the year, I was so exhausted. And then I learned, I was like, dude, everything that you're saying yes to is a trade-off. If you say yes to this, that's less time with your brother. If you say yes to this person, it's less time with your mom and dad. If you say yes to this, it's less time with yourself. If you say yes to this project with this company, it's less time on your dream. If you, We only have limited time and energy. And I did not really realize that until this year. It sounds simple, but it's like, how many times do we do things and not subconsciously realize, oh, I just sacrificed the two hours I was supposed to give to myself. And this year, I have been just like, shout out to my guy Sly, because he was like four months of no. And I I mean, there's been a couple times where I've done things I was like, "Ah, I didn't want to do that. But for the most part, it really has been. When I'm planning my week, it's me first. It's my people second. It's my dream third. Anything after that is going to be extra. And it kind of ties into, there's like random studies, right, about, hey, you only need three friends. I don't know if you've seen those studies, right? It's like you need three good friends. Again, with this mindset of everybody needs to like me, it's a part of the reason why I probably have so many relationships in my life, which I'm grateful for. But there's a difference between having a lot of friends and feeling like you need hundreds of friends. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, you know, I throw these huge events in LA, a couple hundred people. And for a while it was like, that was actually filling my own personal cup of like, okay, cool. Like I'm relevant. I'm cool. I'm popular. But then it's like, that's over and you feel empty and a little bit lonely versus like, I'm going to make sure that my three good friendships are really tight and strong. Now I don't need this. Now there's a cherry on top. Now I'm doing this because what I want to do professionally for my purpose. But this this world of all these people and all these influencers and this and that, I don't need them to like me to feel whole about myself. I got a great relationship with my mom, my brother, my dad, my family, my closest friends. I'm straight. Everything else is now extra. And that's been a huge flip for me this year where, and some people, you know, get a little bit upset. But at the end of the day, I've just told people like it is, hey, I'm spending time myself, my family, and my dreams. And like, I love you. I respect you. I appreciate you. We are going to see each other again. We're going to talk again. But right now, like, this is just where I'm at in my journey. And, you know, I'm always with you. Like, I'm always there with you. But I just can't. Mm -hmm. I don't have the time to give. I can't go get the coffee. I cannot hop on a two-hour Zoom call with you. I I can't do that. And a part of that is learning to respect yourself more, Mm -hmm. knowing your worth, saying, you know what, at the end of the day, if somebody wants to talk to me about their business for four hours, 
there's a value exchange there. I'm giving a lot of value. So I have to then, what's the receipt? Is it money? Is it, it doesn't have to always be money, but what is that? And starting mm-hmm. to learn again, if you, if you're giving, it's like, where is it coming back in that scenario? Mm-hmm. That's in a business setting. I think it can be different in other settings for like, if I'm giving to my mom or my brother, that's a different kind of give because it depends on the situation. Right. But that's just something that I've dove, dove super deep into this year that I don't talk about too much, but it's really changed. Like I would not be able to be doing what I'm doing right now. We talked about being a solo entrepreneur. I am making videos, planning events, reaching out to schools. Oh my gosh. I mean, like there's like a list of making websites, you know, talking to brands. I mean, there's a million things you're art you're doing. I would, I would be dead. I would be so <laughs> exhausted if I was doing those other things. And it's why, again, I had to cut out the alcohol and other stuff. I was like, I just literally don't have time. I can't, I can't drink. I can't do this because it's a trade-off. I can do these things or I can have energy to pursue my dreams and passions and show up as my best. Which one do I want more? I want this. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to demonize any of these things because it's like teach their own. But mm-hmm. for me right now in this journey, this is where I have to be. So anyways, long winded answer, but I could talk about this for a long time because it has been truthfully a huge, if not the biggest growing point for me this entire year. Well, and I think it applies to anybody in any season Mm -hmm. where you, everything's a trade off. And so getting locked in and like, if you're off, if your mental health is in the dump, like (laughs) something's got to shift and it doesn't Mm -hmm. necessarily mean like, you can't chase your dreams and work hard. It just means like, are you aligned with what you're doing? And are you aligned with the people that make you feel like you can be doing what you really yeah. want to be doing? And yeah. there's so many little pieces that when they're plugged into the right socket can light yeah. you up, but yeah. you've got to keep figuring <laughs> out like what to remove, what to add in. And I think it's, it's really for anybody. Yeah. hundred percent. I love what you said too, respecting yourself enough to set that boundary. Yeah. Right. Of this is just what it is. Yeah. Alcohol. Not the move. We not the move right now. It's not an absolute. It's not a never. But right now I respect myself, my people, my dreams enough to say, just need a little break. Yeah. And then the willingness to explore. Yeah. Like what could this give me? What could this do? Yeah. Now I yeah. think the those questions, just going back to that, and the ability to imagine yeah. the visualization yeah. and the trust. And yeah. it's such a spiritual game, which I want to yeah. get into just a little. <laughs> yeah. Like talk yeah, to yeah, us yeah, about yeah your spiritual practices and and maybe how it's evolved from just over the past few months or years. Yeah. It's evolved a ton. I I love the, to me, that's the most exciting part about life, the possibilities Mm -hmm. like that's, I, and I don't exactly know where that came from. I I always had it, but I do know there's a a story that amplified that feeling for me. And again, you guys are getting some some stories that I don't share much, but (laughs) people, my, my OG people know this, but Back in 2021, when we had basically our big, working for Charlie, biggest story ever, we had this this dream where Oprah came in and Steve Harvey and we threw this event in Beverly Hills and it got, I think, a billion views across social media platforms and national news. And we were basically like, it was, I mean, I actually remember that day where I told people, I was like, it feels like this is the outro. Like, it feels like we just won the game, like of the game of life. And the, like, I, we all were sitting there just, Chills. what is happening, right? Four days later, I get sick. I ended up going to an Airbnb because in our house was always 50 people because we lived in this content home and it was crazy. <laughs> uh, the day after that, I'm like, I feel dizzy. Go to the hospital. It was COVID. Hospitals were full. They're like, you're good. Go home, drink water. Next day, I pass out on the sidewalk. Wake up in in a daze. And I'm like, I'm calling the ambulance. Call 911. Ambulance comes. Ended up being in the hospital for 10 days. Uh, And I really didn't know if I was going to live. Like, they didn't tell me. I was hooked up to oxygen the entire time. I ended up having COVID and pneumonia. Uh, which is how a lot of people died because the combo of those two is, is, is intense. When I got out of that, my brain like barely was working. I couldn't really read. Talking was hard. So I went home for two months and I had to basically sort of like get myself grounded again. And I remember about a couple weeks into that, this wave of gratitude hit me. 
where it was just like, whew, and everyone's like, how are you? I'm like, I'm great. I'm alive. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Like, I'm amazing, right? Mm-hmm. And I invented this mantra in that, in that time frame. But I just said, today could be the day. And me and my friends started saying it. Today could be the day, man. Let's go. Today could be the day Tuesday. Today could be the day Thursday. You know, we started saying it. And then people were like, well, today could be the day for what? It's like anything. That's the best part. We don't know. We got to go find out. Right? And I, I started saying that. And I think that's truthfully how I feel about most of my days. Not all of them. But it's like you get up and when you feel like there's magic that can happen in the day, you look for it. You know, you start to seek it out. You start to say, well, what's going to happen today? What if I get a phone call today that changes my life? What if I get a, what if we're done with this meeting and I have an email that says, hey, we want you to come speak at our school? What if my friend says, yo, man, we're doing this sauna and ice bath party tonight. We got, you know, we got a whole DJ coming. We're doing stuff. Come hang out. Let's do it. You know, what, what if, right? What if I have this amazing workout? What if, you know, what if I end up having this random, awesome interaction with one of my friends I haven't talked to in years? And that, to me, is where you start to look for that. It starts to happen, right? And there's science behind this, right? I'm sure you know the reticular activating system. It's like our brain is always processing things, right? We're only looking at 0.001% of things. But we start looking for the what ifs, the mm-hmm. possibilities, we're going to start to find it. And yeah. that has been a huge reason why, I approach days like this because I'm like, the magic is out there. We are all made of the same universal stuff. And so to get to my spiritual beliefs, it's my belief is truthfully about oneness. Like that's my, it's funny. I was talking this last night because I just read this book called the autobiography of a yogi. It's this guy, Paramahansa Yogananda. He's the creator of this Kriya yoga and the whole they're one of, they have a, a, a fellowship in Los Angeles called Lake Shrine. Gandhi's remains are there. It's like wow. one of the most spiritual places I've ever been. But where I'm at in my journey is like, regardless of what you or I believe, we came from the same place. And I always go back to that. Regardless of if you say you're a Christian and I'm a Muslim, or if you're a Buddhist and I'm a Hindu, or you're Jewish and I'm this, We came from the same place. Like, I am you, you are me. We are all made up of the same atoms as the universe. So, like, to me, the spiritual goal is getting to that point of oneness and knowing. And I'm early in that journey. Like, I, I don't pretend like I'm there, but that is, to me now, the objective. And understanding that, well, what does that look like? The highest frequency is love. You know, it's the Bob Marley love is my religion, right? It's getting to that point where you can love the worst parts of yourself, love the worst parts of others, understand that we are all super imperfect and flawed. We're all trying to be our best. But yet there is obviously something that connects us all, whether you want to call it God, the universe, energy, quantum realms. We are clearly connected. Like it is so obvious. No matter what you believe, every spiritual text, 95% of them are saying the same thing. Science is saying the same things that the spiritual texts are saying. So it's like, we, we can't miss this, in my opinion. Like, this is like, we are connected. What we do matters. Our life matters. And showing up with this idea of love and oneness and togetherness and having empathy for each other and knowing that we're all in this together, like, that, to me, is where my spiritual journey has landed. And it's why I love some of these principles of this Kriya Yoga and the book I just read because that is their entire philosophy is to get to this point of, they call it self-realization, but it's this oneness. It's mm-hmm. this ultimate connection with God and with everything in the world. And so I'm early on this journey, but I just started learning about some of these things this year. And it really has validated some of those gut feelings mm-hmm. I've had in my core of like, I don't like how we draw so many us versus thems mm-hmm. when it comes to our human experience. Especially but, this time of year, this Year yeah, specifically. the election, yeah. and the reli- I mean, it, politics, religion, you name it, mm-hmm. you know, and so I get it. It's hard to not do, but it's something where when you're looking at someone and be like, oh, screw that person. You're like, well, wait a second. Like, mm-hmm. Maybe there's mm-hmm. maybe they actually have the same things going on as you. They just are trying to go about it in a different way or, you know, and that's that's how I'm trying to show up now. So that spiritual piece of it is really big for me and finding that lake it's called lake shrine in los angeles that to me has been an awesome spiritual hub for me because they have these sunday 
sermons and then you can go to the meditation gardens and you can pray oh my god i knew i needed to move to la (laughs) it's insane it's insane the gandhi shrine you walk up and your whole body gets the goose stop it's insane so it's really cool um so that's yeah it's a little bit like you know and and the funny thing is i read this whole book and it doesn't even tell you what kriya yoga is because it's like it it is like this it's this meditation and prayer method Mm -hmm. to connect with god and so you basically have to get trained in in doing it. And so mm-hmm. I think my next step will be taking those lessons to try to learn that. And then that'll get added into my ideally daily, you know, yeah. prayer of, uh, you know, adding that to the journey. But again, with anything else, they talk about how, hey, this is not a, you do it for a week uh-huh. and you're good. This is a 30 year journey of you have to do this. And it's like anything else, it takes time. So no, it's like entrepreneurship, self-growth, <laughs> right? Everything we've just yeah, been talking anything. about, it's the willingness to do the work and yeah. know that it never ends. Never ends. Well, and you're such a great person to follow because of the humility you have. Like you keep making yourself the beginner and you keep starting from scratch and teaching yourself and learning. And as much as you feel like you're just at the beginning of this, no, you're not. <laughs> you're so evolved. You are so self-aware. You have had so many life lessons at such a young age already. Like, being able to follow you and watch this journey, I feel so privileged. I can, mm-hmm. like, you just talk, I'm going to cry. Like, having you sitting here with all the things you're saying, like, I can't wait for my kids to hear you mm-hmm. and watch you and be at school and you're on the mm-hmm. stage talking to them. Like, you are who our kids need to hear. I'm so grateful mm-hmm. that you're sitting here today. Mm-hmm. Can't wait to listen to this back myself. <laughs> and also, <laughs> your first school is going to be in Minnesota. And yeah, we're yeah, going to yeah. come... Yes. Let's go. <laughs> so we want people to know where to follow you, how to get involved. If they're like, my school needs you. Yeah. How do they find you? How do they email you? Tell them everything. For sure. For the, the speaking, if there's a school out there, dreamerstate.com slash speaking is where I have my speaking landing page and it has a video and all the different things. And that's, you can contact me there. Uh, so if there's any schools or if you know any schools, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to hit the road. Mm-hmm. Um, and then as, lo- as in the other side of thing for the dreamer state side of stuff, uh, just dreamerstate.com slash community is, is probably the best place. You know, you can enter your email and then I mentioned, uh, by the time this podcast is live, I might have it ready, but I'm building out my virtual campus. So that's going to be this digital hub for the community to connect. So as I go all over the country, now people will be able to be united uh, we'll put our courses in there. I want to get dreamology guest professors. I'll probably have you guys in there at some point. Yes. So start to get other knowledge in there, offer some coaching and stuff like that. And then I always think you update people up to date on the in-person stuff. So right now it's these quarterly socials. So I like to kind of theme it off of school stuff. You know, your spring break, your school's out for summer event, your fall social. And then we have our once a year our annual retreat. So it's in the works. I don't know if it's going to happen this year. Um, but either this year or next year, we will be doing a New Year's Eve mm-hmm. manifestation retreat where we go somewhere. Um, the locations are probably going to either be Maui or Costa Rica. See you there. And we're <laughs> going to do, yeah, a whole experience with that. So, uh, and that's going to be kind of our study abroad, you know. So all these things, again, it's kind of brick by brick. But dreamersday.com slash community if you're an individual who wants to join slash speaking if you will have schools or stuff like that. And then just Timmy the Dreamer on Instagram is where I'm the most active. TikTok, I'm starting the journey. It's on there as well. So um, just got my first lead from TikTok. So I'm like, that's yes. sweet, right? Mm-hmm. You don't need a million followers to get leads. No. Um, and yeah, we're going to do this thing. I, I am hoping to, well, by the time this launches again, this competition will be over, but I'm hoping to win this competition I'm in right now, get a scholarship. And the plan is to get a light blue school bus uh, which hopefully I have it by the time this episode comes out. But <laughs> I want my light blue school bus. I want my dreamer state school bus going to schools, traveling, oh. and to be able to just piece this whole thing together. Um, it's going to be a crazy year. It's going to be a crazy year. I, I can feel like it's fun to now create new stories, mm-hmm. you know, not to – this Charlie chapter was amazing, but I don't want to tell those stories my whole life, you know. I, I'm excited to create keep these – Keep creating these stories. And, uh, 
It's going to be cool. Yeah. It's we keep saying cool. when it happens, but it is. It yeah, is yeah, it like is it, yeah, like it's happening actively, which is cool. And we have listeners currently in 96 countries, so you might Ooh. need to take that bus and fly overseas. I'm ready. We might need to put that on a ferry. I know. <laughs> we'll do We'll do international tour next. Let's do it. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Let's do it. Timmy, this is a dream. We're so grateful that you worked at the expo that we that happened to be at. Like, I know. What are the odds? I know. Divine timing. I fully, fully believe in it. Mm-hmm. And whoever's listening to this, that's going to be divine timing for you. Someone listening right now may have a dream that is in the works and they need a little inspiration to keep going or they have that idea. And this is your moment to say, I can do it. Yeah. One step. Take that next step. Yeah. 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 All because they listened to you today. Yeah. Yeah. And Timmy, we always leave our listeners with a few segments. Okay. One is three gold stars. If you had three tips, three takeaways, someone's tuning in. They hear Timmy the Dreamer. What do you want to tell them? Step one, after this episode, go sit by yourself somewhere. It could be in nature. It could be in your car. It could be in your room. Go sit by yourself and lead yourself through that meditation of if that path that everybody, the life that everybody has always told me to live, if that, if that didn't exist, just what would my dreams look like? professionally, personally, and let yourself go there. Like create space for that. And then write down what comes up. Like write it down. And then what I do is I sign it. I say it's like I'm signing a contract with myself. Mm. Hang it up somewhere. Hang it up on your wall, your mirror. Step one. Step two, tell somebody about it. And if you can, get a consistent meeting on the calendar. Hey, every Sunday, first Sunday of the month, First end of the month, I'm going to call you and we're going to talk about our dreams. Share it and talk about it with others. Step three is you have to just start doing things. The dreams you wrote down at the beginning, you might realize, oh, that's not exactly it, but you're not going to know unless you start doing things. Start doing things, learn from it, evolve as you go, and it's going to take you towards where you want to be. So I would say those three steps, sit with yourself, meditate on your dreams, write it down, share it with others. Start to take action, and it's it's going to take you there. And be willing to learn when you're taking action. Mm-hmm. Know that it's not going to be perfect because nobody's life is. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Such good steps. Okay, next segment is Unleashing Ivy. So three, rapid fire, not Boom. really rapid fire. Boom. More random questions for you. Boom. Do you have your question already? Yeah, I do. Okay, rapid fire. Okay, so me and business, I am – A visionary. Yeah. I have big ideas, big dreams every day, all day long. And then it's the, my question is about like how you take them and like, yes, tangible steps, but like you're on a run, you have all these ideas. Like how do you decide which big ideas to implement? Like how do you decide yeah. I, like every day I have like 15 yeah. and I'm like, yeah. bro, how are we implementing this? The logistics <laughs> software engineer over here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is great. When too. you don't have an integrator, yeah. you don't yeah. have someone to For integrate sure. into your business. For sure. What do you do with what that? Do you do? This has been actually a big part of my year too, because I've always been the guy who's like, I have so many ideas. How am I supposed to do them? Mm-hmm. And then I realized, I wonder if, if Elon Musk is saying that. I wonder if Jeff Bezos is saying that, or if they're like, Dude, like, figure it out. Like, it was kind of this, like, victim of, like, how am I supposed to do it, right? It's like, <laughs> mm. well, f- like, well, okay, let's break this down. And mastery is actually my word of the year, which we haven't talked about, but I read this book by Mab- Robert Greene called Mastery, and he said, do not fool yourself in thinking that you can, multi- you can master multiple things at one time. Mm-hmm. And so I realized my whole life I had all these ideas, and they were all on the same plane. Mm-hmm. Like today is Timmy, tomorrow, 20 ideas are all going to happen. <laughs> and so for me, it was like learning how to put them in a timeline that's like, well, what are the dominoes? Mm. And what is really the main domino that knocks the other ones over? So for me, starting Dreamer State, again, it was the same way. I want to launch the digital community. I want to do events. I want to do retreats. I want to launch courses. I want to, but I didn't know what my main domino was. And that it doesn't just hit you. It took some time, but it's how I landed on speaking as my main domino. Cause I was like, well, at the end of the day, the leader of any community needs to be a great communicator. I love speaking. I always have. It's a way for me to make money to be able to spread my mission. So what if I make speaking my first domino 
And that is now the lens of if I do anything, is it related at all to the first domino? And then I'm going to say, okay, after this, Okay, now I'm like, okay, now it makes sense to put the digital community in because when I go speak at schools and I have nothing to bring them to, then I'm not empowering them. I'm just inspiring them. Mm. Okay, let's build a digital community. All right, um, what else can we do? Okay, let's throw some events because it gets our community together, but also it's more chance for me to speak on stages. Okay, let's, so now I, for the first time ever, I'm like, this is my first time having a five-year plan. I can (laughs) see like, oh, I'm going to do this and then I have this big idea and then I'm going to have this big idea. And I'm allowing myself again to know that it doesn't need to happen overnight. I think when that insecurity hits and you're like, I need to do this all tomorrow, Mm -hmm. that's when it's hard. But when you're like, this is a long game, I'm going for mastery for black belt. I can map this out over 10 years. Mm -hmm. I don't have to cheat the process. And I've learned that if you try to cheat the process, you can get some success, but you're going to always drop back down to your level of knowledge and your level of experience. So it's like, like it's like those one hit wonders in music, right? One hit wonder, you drop back down. Mm-hmm. You got to build your way back up. Like yeah. everybody at some point is going to have to do that. So for me, this year it has been really getting clear on what's the main dominoes. And if it's not related to that, it can either wait or it's, does this relate in any way? And if it does, let's just see when it makes sense. Like, is this something I should do right now? Is it something I should do later? How does it flow? And that is kind of how I've been thinking about it this year of like, try to not have your ideas again, all on this like horizon. I do this all right now. It's how can they fall in mm. and play into each other? Mm. And then just, again, it comes back to trust, trust that that's going to work out the way it's supposed to when you just focus on one at a time. But I think this goes to habits too. Like my whole life, I was always like, I'm going to reinvent myself. <laughs> I, tomorrow I'm going to start doing meditation and breath work and exercise <laughs> and da, 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 da. and you never do it. But right. this year has been the first time where I'm like, okay, you know what? No, I actually, I really need to make sure I cut this out. And I realized like, dang, just focusing on one. And then that's a habit. Mm -hmm. And then three months later, add another one in. Mm -hmm. And then three months, it's so much easier. But it's like, we want it all right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you literally took those four ideas you have right now, mapped them out over the course of the next two years and just spent six months on each, you probably would bring them all to life. So that's, I, for me, been a big part of the year, too. So I think it's just understanding which one can fall into the next. And then once you cre- create a draft of that, if a new idea comes in, you see, all right, well, where does this fall in the timeline? Is this super urgent, important? Is this three months from now? Is it a year from now? Mm-hmm. Is it two years from now? And I try to go about it like that. Again, I'm also a one-man show right now. So it is like my time's limited. Is this, is this a better use of my time than reaching out to schools, than making content, mm-hmm then doing my outreach, you know, if not, then, okay, it's going to wait. Yeah, yeah. Or I find a time to get some extra credit on a Saturday. I'm going to get some <laughs> extra credit. Seriously, you know what I mean? It's like, okay, mm-hmm. I want to build my digital community. All right, I'm doing it at probably 6 p.m. tonight. I, told, I said, okay, I started on Tuesday. I'm like, this needs to be launched by the time the tour starts. All right, let's start building out our first course. And I'm like, let's just sit down and do it. So finding those extra pockets of time where you're like, all right, I'm not going to sacrifice a work day, but on a Saturday, I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to take four hours and I'm going to try to get started on it. Right. So it's each up to every individual, right. To decide what that looks like, but you can't do it all. Yeah. Can't do it all. That's great advice. Great, great advice. Okay. My question is around being in the self-help personal development space, also being a dreamer. As a one-man show entrepreneur, you could spend all day just (laughs) absorbing the information from other people. For sure. So how do you find that balance of trusting you have everything you need to go out there and get it done, but also wanting to evolve and learn? What does that look like for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. Um, It's funny. Literally two days ago, I was like, how funny are humans? Because (laughs) the universe literally like scientifically is always expanding and growing. So if the universe is literally expanding and growing, like how naive would we be to think that we are done growing, (laughs) right? It's like, so Mm -hmm. kind of knowing that we're designed to grow, not because of a place of lack or again, like I'm not enough, but like this is what we're designed to do. We literally grow. We start as babies. Mm We become children, we become adults, like we let's we literally grow. So I think knowing that that's 
a core function of being a human being is like, okay, this is a part of my purpose as a human is to grow. And so I'm going to do it from that place instead of the place of lack. Now, if there is those wounds or those things that make you feel like you're not enough, then I do think, again, like anything we talked about, space needs to be created for it. Um, my mentor I talked about, he has a whole TED Talk on self-love, and he talks about can you love the part of yourself that you deem most unlovable? Can you celebrate the parts of yourself that nobody celebrates? And what's the third one? Um, there's a third one in there, but basically like, you know, can you learn to love these things and grow from a place of, I understand that I have these things, but I'm not doing it out of this shame and this spite of myself. And I'm the worst. I suck. I'm doing it from a place of like, Hey, I see you, bro. Like Mm -hmm. I see you. I see you. Like we're going to work on this stuff together and treat it like a relationship. Right. Um, so for me, Recently, the the education and the learning has been very much from a place of I'm just excited to continue to reach my full potential. Um, And it has been, again, this whole theme this year is just creating space to sit with your shadows, Mm -hmm. your the things that, you know, because it's like at the end of the day, I love pleasure. I love happiness. You know, my world could so be like, I'm going to just go party every night and I'm going to go talk to girls and I'm going to just have fun. Like, that's my shadow, right? That's the fraternity kid in me. That's the, and that's there. I have to respect and know that because if I don't understand that, then that could come out in a very ugly way in the future, right? That could come out in the form of, you know, when men cheat on their wives or do something terrible, it's because they're not acknowledging, oh, I'm this, I want pleasure, I want satisfaction, and the young boy in me knows these other ways to get it. But I have to know that's there and be like, I see you. I know what you want. You want fun. You want love. You want, but we're going to, I see you. We're going to get it in other ways. But if it's just like, I'm going to ignore it. I'm going to ignore these parts of myself and I'm just going to grow. And I don't, you know, it can, again, it can come out. And I think we all see some people like that where they're at that part of their journey. And we've, I think I've been there. We've all been there where you're growing, but you're doing it from a place of like, there's just a lot of this negative emotion. Um, and I think we all have to experience that a bit to know the difference between doing it from a place of love and doing it from a place of like kind of this like self hate and self sabotage. It kind of circles back to what you said at the beginning, how you have more empathy and compassion for others. Cause I feel like you found it for yourself. Cause I know yeah. just from following you that you took some time yeah. to unplug, realign, yeah. really get clear in what you wanted. And like, yeah. I'm sure part of that was like the not drinking and whatever yeah. and addressing truly how yeah. your mental health is doing. And so I think when yeah. you can find that for yourself, it's just like a mirror. That's yeah. how you can have mm-hmm. it for others. But yeah. you have to fully allow yourself to feel. So it's just like your number one gold star <laughs> was sit yeah. with yourself. Like yeah. Yeah. it's it's going to show up in other ways if you don't address it at some point. Like sure. be fully honest with where you're at and, and the dark pieces of your yourself, your trauma, your history, whatever it is, sit yeah. with it. Sit or it'll come it. find you. Sit with it. Last question. <laughs> Are you ready? This ready. is the last one. Okay. Ready. If you could go back to younger Timmy. Yeah. Any age and tell him something. What age would he be and what would you tell him? Mm. Oh, man. That's a good question. <sighs> younger Timmy. So many, so many different chapters <laughs> <laughs> of life. Um I feel like it would be right in that phase when I was getting back from, this was like my last year of college. Because that phase for me, that phase and then going into after college was when it was just a mess. And I think it's like, (laughs) I would tell myself like what, you're experiencing right now is temporary I think as a student everything feels so permanent like and it's all this sort of game of well what company are you going to work at and what it's it's you know what are your grades and what's this and you're playing this huge comparison game between this like very bubble of people that when you get out of college six months later nobody cares about any of that (laughs) stuff anymore and it's really interesting, and especially when you get three, four years out of college, all people care about is, you know, are you good? 
Mm-hmm. Are you happy? They don't say, well, what Fortune 500 company <laughs> are you working for? And how is your internship going? And, you know, all these things. And it's like, I'm not saying it's not important to show up, but I think it's like these really big things of life that we stress about in the moment. When you just take a bird's eye view, you realize it's like a page of the of the book of your life. So I think in that chapter, I was so caught up with, oh my God, I'm doing something weird and these people are doing this and should I be doing that? And maybe this all comes down to like this, this same theme of like, dude, just stay on your path. Mm-hmm. Maybe that would be the actual line. Stay on your path. Just stay on it. You're, you're not going to regret taking the path towards your true dreams. The beginning is going to be rocky. Good. Mm-hmm. Embrace it. Embrace it embrace this struggle and this hardship and these emotions because this is building you into that person you're supposed to be to go do the things you're supposed to do. And it's like knowing what I know now, those hard moments, that is like the, the creates the most beautiful things of life. So stay on the path, embrace it and know that like the flowers are going to bloom when they're ready. <laughs> right. Yeah, so that's what yeah. everyone listening, like we all need to hear that, yeah. right? Of don't look at their path. The don't grass ain't always path. greener. <laughs> Rarely. <laughs> Stay on your path, put your blinders on yeah, and keep moving towards what's pulling you. Yeah. 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 Man. Okay. Well, this has Ooh. been so fun. I feel like we could talk all day. And we <laughs> will. And I'm so excited for this journey. This year is so huge. It's crazy. And huge. we're so happy to huge. promote what you're doing and really hope that people hear this and they reach out and they, yeah. even if you're kind yeah. of thinking you might have a connection, reach out to Timmy, help him with this dream, me up. help people, help these kids hear this message. We're so grateful that we know you and we always leave our listeners with a piece of gold. All right. Your favorite quote or your own that speaks to you. Mm, oh, I, 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 I thought about this actually. Uh, shout out to my guy, John Kempf. Yeah, John. Uh, AKA the real life Thor. Cause he looks like Thor. <laughs> Lives in Maui, literally like oh, wow. is is Thor. Uh, he has a quote that he told me end of last year. He says, a leader of one is a leader of many. If you can't lead one, you can't lead any. This is Gold Ivy signing off. Listen <laughs> your truth and go chase your gold. We want to thank you and encourage you to celebrate yourself for taking the time to learn and get inspired in your one beautiful life. And if this podcast means something to you, it would mean so much to us if you'd be willing to take 30 seconds to help support our mission to keep bringing you inspiring stories and guests. First, following the podcast is important because it helps you never miss an episode. To do this, just go to the Ivy Unleashed podcast show page on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And then just tap the plus sign in the upper right-hand corner or click on follow. While you're there, if you'd be so kind to give us a five-star rating and review and share your favorite episode with a friend, we'd be so grateful for your support. We are thrilled you're here and are so happy that you're taking time to prioritize your wellness, self-discovery, and growth with us.